Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to take your seats, one minute to start with Vince Palomara. <clears throat> Thirty seconds. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are here to introduce Mr. Vince Palomara. He is an amazing man and a, an astute researcher. He's the world's foremost authority on Secret Service, bar none. He has shed new light on the complicity, the guilt, and the treasonous activities that followed that allowed John F. Kennedy to be slaughtered in Dealey Plaza. Vince has three books, and there, he is considered the number one source and reliable source of unbiased information about the good and the bad and the ugly of the Secret Service. Ladies and gentlemen, Vince Palomara. Good morning, everyone. Hope you can hear me okay. I'm on? I'm good? Okay. All right. I have a lot to get to. Um, I'm going to start with a PowerPoint presentation. I'll just say in general that <clears throat> I'm the author of five books. And uh, yeah, my latest one is Honest Answers About the Murder of President John F. Kennedy. And it covers the assassination in general words. My other four books, um, well, three of them were on the Secret Service and one was on the medical evidence. But I'm going to get to this right now. It's my PowerPoint presentation. First of all, just a, a test. I'm going to take that back. Uh, can you see that? Were you able to see that? Yes? Okay. No? Couldn't see it. Okay. Uh, no, uh, we see your face, but not a PowerPoint presentation. Okay, let me know if you see this. Do you see that? Click share screen at the bottom. Okay. Okay, okay, let's see here. Share screen. Share. Okay, how about now? Yes, sir. You do see it, okay, very good. Okay, here we go. Max, maximize your screen, there you go. Okay. Let me just start that over real quick here. Okay, it's starting in a second. Hold on a minute. Okay, here we go. Yeah, The Warren Report, The Secret Service, and JFK by myself, author of five books, like I said. And the report would have you believe the Secret Service could not have prevented the assassination. They also left the impression that JFK was directly or indirectly responsible for the lack of security. They were dead wrong. This is a contemporary news article about, talking about the 26 volumes of the Warren Commission. And one of the things they said was, for instance, would Kennedy be alive today if Secret Service agents had shielded him by standing on the special steps in the back of the presidential limousine? The answer is yes. Now here's some more contemporary, just a snippet of it, but Secret Service shield. President Kennedy might have been shielded by a Secret Service agent standing on the right rear step of his death car. And here's agents on the back of the car here. And here is this, the previous trip to Florida. It showed a lot more images than this. These are kind of small, but you'll see more. And even, again, contemporary news articles during President Kennedy's administration was argued some of the television cameramen, they could not get a good view of the president. In the Dallas motorcade, the Secret Service men were not placed around the president as closely as they have been on other occasions. Another one, contemporary questions, very interesting. For instance, why wasn't Gerald A. Bain, special agent in charge of the White House detail in Dallas November 22nd? In fact, Jerry Bain um, was with 
the Secret Service White House details since the FDR days. And he took his first full vacation under JFK during those almost three years during that fateful weekend of the Florida and Texas trips. And I call this a major discovery of mine. Multi-story building rooftops were normally guarded during the FDR, Truman, Ike, and JFK eras. In addition, a large number of police and undercover detectives normally mixed in with the crowds. This is in addition to the military and or police lying the streets and facing the crowds. I can't stress this enough. Most people think that, oh, Vince, all that happened after the assassination, right? It was in response to the assassination. No, multi-story building rooftops were guarded since the FDR era through and including the JFK era. And this is very, very interesting. This is the day of the assassination, a short little video. This is ABC's Ron Gardner to many millions of people around the world. Vince, we do not have sound. Turn the sound on the video. Stop share. You can't, you know, not okay. hear it. You have to stop share. You have to reshare with computer sound. Okay. Uh, so stop share and then we'll share again with computer sound. Share screen, share. With computer sound, uh, where's that? Oh, share sound, share sound. Okay. Carefully screwed uh, for firing a shot. It's most unusual We're good now. that such a thing could happen Great. because of the uh, unusually tight security measures that are ordinarily taken by the uh, Secret Service who guard the president and. Uh, Normally, any vantage point, a rooftop, and uh, windows which command uh, a parade route are carefully scrutinized and carefully guarded, and men are usually posted on rooftops along a parade route, uh, particularly if there is any, any reason at all to suppose that there might be someone in the area who uh, would have uh, uh, such ideas as assassination in his mind regarding the president. These precautions, of course, are taken by the Secret Service for all presidents as they have been for many years. In that clip, I just found earlier this year, it was in the midst of hours and hours of ABC footage. So pretty amazing. Uh, for and we'll go ahead here. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, let me skip through here. Find my place again. Uh, Let's see here. Okay, sorry about that. This is from a 1962 book, What Would the Secret Service Do? Again, 1962, Chief Riley. It was also written with the help of Chief Inspector Michael Trina, who I spoke to, spoke to both gentlemen. And they confirm what you see here, and you'll see it in larger print, it just basically saying the presence to appear in a parade, agents and police are assigned post atop buildings against the year before the assassination. Here it is again, the presence to appear in a parade, agents or police are assigned to uh, top buildings and on the parade route. So again, this is before the assassination, this was out there, but again, it, it's just a long out of print book. I find this many years later, just like that video I just found earlier this year, I had to pay a lot of fees to get newspaper articles you'll see coming up. A lot of this was not well known to put it mildly. This is from, again, JFK was still alive when this came out. This came out early 1962. And the large part you'll see is that the agents, they guard the rooftops, sewers and balconies along the route that the president will follow. There's a picture of Special Agent in Charge Jerry Bain. It's an article that was seen around the world. But again, you know, these things are long gone out of print. You have to pay fees. You have to look on eBay for them. That's where we're at, you know, with a lot of information. This is amazing. It's the summer of 63, okay? President will have plenty of protection while abroad. They asked local authorities 
to put police on top of buildings. So again, look at that. Amazing. And I had to pay a fee. It's like $50 from newspaper.com, but that's another story in itself. See, these aren't readily available. You can't just Google them. They're buried in newspaper archives, but there it is, summer 63. They asked local authorities to put police on top of buildings. And just articles in general, secret service men keep presence of you know, safe abroad at home, done Fred JFK open safe abroad. These are all for the summer of 63. More of the same, present on European trip to have heavy protection. And this is, this is great. This is just talking about how from 1954, from the Secret Service manual in effect, about how you should keep suspicious persons away from windows and rooftops. This came out right after the assassination. Former Chief Huey Bauman said the clearing of buildings on parade ride called fundamental. And talk about this was true in all buildings along Pennsylvania Avenue during presidential inaugural parades and in buildings along out of town motorcade routes. So keep, keep that in mind. This is the FDR era. 10,000 policemen stationed along the motorcade's right rooftops were ordered to clear spectators, and the Secret Service and probably the FBI were on the job. So, again, it goes back to FDR. Where's typical security for FDR? There's Truman era. Police detectives along the street, officers guard, and you get just in the interest of time building rooftops. There's more from the Truman era about some perched on hills and buildings, 300 police, Truman heavily guarded. Truman heavily guarded. Imagine if, he, if JFK would have got this kind of protection in Dallas, just like you can look to the FDR I just showed, same thing. There's a reason why presidents lived before JFK. It wasn't rubbing a rabbit's foot. Ike era, same thing. Every rooftop covering the windows, access roads were blocked, so they guarded rooftops. More Ike, that they stood with some machine guns on top of buildings or rooftops. More different trip this time talking about buildings and rooftops same thing this is eisenhower this is 1957 there's the partial bubble top and there's um motorcycle police and mounted police and also lying in the streets the secret service and now the jfk era keep in mind jfk only went on a select amount of motorcades he didn't go on hundreds of motorcades this is the grand total of motorcades 61 62 63 here we go that's it so we're not talking about a whole bunch. It's easy to dissect the motorcades by using this information. Nashville. Men took their posts at 8 a.m. and remained at the top station of the president and his party passed. Other buildings along the rot. Can't just stress this enough. I used to have this from the Nashville banner, an old yellowy uh, newspaper disintegrated. I got it in 1999 from researcher Bill Adams. But luckily, JFK in Nashville, the book came out in 2013 and reprinted this. So there you go. Building rooftops for guard in May of 63. This is from a different newspaper in Nashville. Hundreds of policemen and plainclothes detectives were scattered through the crowd. This is how they protected presidents back then. They didn't always have a police state. They didn't always have tons of men on the car and so forth. What they did is they would have many policemen and detectives in the crowds. They had the building rooftops guarded, among other procedures. Just talking about more about how trauma, they blocked every line of travel along the route in Nashville. There's a picture of the Nashville motorcade, one part of it. You can see agents around the car. Milwaukee, May of 62. We have to police the tops of buildings, too, and all bridges and viaducts along the route. That's the chief of police in Milwaukee, Dahl. We have to police the tops of buildings, too. Keep that in mind. Guard up for JFK every second when he was in Wisconsin. Guard from above by city policemen. See, that's how they did it back then. So if you're looking at old, the occasional news reel from different trips to JFK, and every once in a while it looks like he's a quote-unquote sitting duck, like he was in Dallas, no. Unlike in Dallas, building rooftops were guarded, and hundreds of police were intermingled in the crowds. So that's two major ways they thwarted potential assassins. Keep in mind, this is before 9-11 for the threat of terrorism. So this is more about worried about handguns and pistols and whatnot. And just saying the same thing, it's the Milwaukee newspaper again, how they... Um, Security was their main concern, and they had police officers at all intersections along the route. And this is Milwaukee again. See, look, here we go. Look at the police and undercover people. Is this a sample right there with the arrows of what they did? This is how presidents lived back then, and police were on top of the buildings, too, which you cannot see in the photographs because they're concentrating on Kennedy. Paris. 10,000 policemen and Republican security guards were on duty on rooftops. 
when the Kennedys will visit. That's how Kennedy survived Paris. Hey, and it's that same article again. And look, there's the men right there, the officers. This is a Getty image of the motorcade. He's surrounded by all these horsemen, these policemen on horseback. And there you go, Kennedy. And uh, yeah, that's how he lived. There it is again. There's, there's JFK's in that car. And this is all the mounted police. And they're on top of rooftops as well. Paris again, look at the great motorcycle formation. Think about Dallas. He only had four measly riders and they were put behind the car, making them totally ineffective and useless. Here again, talking about Paris rooftops. This is it when he's Caracas, Venezuela. Helicopters hovered over the official motorcade along the route from the airport into the city. And there was uh, soldiers and police guarding the line of travel. Again, you had to pay a fee through newspapers.com for this. This wasn't something you could Google and find very easily. These are long out of print newspapers and whatnot. And you had to be somebody like me, the one to dig for them. But again, helicopters hovered over the route. Again, about uh, helicopters hovering over the route in Caracas. Talking about when he's in Canada, others will be circulating among the crowds, talking about his bodyguards and whatnot. Rooftops again, and another trip in the Midwest for JFK. Look at that, some Manning rooftops. But again, these all these newspapers are long out of print, long gone. Other police guard the fire escapes and rooftops, talking about a trip to New York. These are all before the assassination. They were spotted on rooftops, among the crowds and cars flanking President Kennedy's convertible in unlikely places, which must be, remain secret. This is from the inaugural, a complete survey of all buildings, water main sewers, et cetera, were done. So the inaugural, that was done, that's standard, but it was also done elsewhere. Talking about rigid security measures for Kennedy's inaugural, talk about they'll be on every rooftop. More or less the same thing here. And this is Chief Raleigh talking about how the uh, manhole covers were sealed against accidental explosions or whatnot, or intended explosions, and how the Secret Service looked at the crowds. This is from Gary Severson, researcher. He said that um, he was a witness to sharpshooters on the roof of the arena, University of North Dakota campus. Um, Larry Yetka was an official in uh, Duluth. And he said, yeah, the security was tight as hell. Men were on the rooftops. This is September 63 when JFK went to, to uh, Duluth. Security men were on top of the roofs. And this is uh, Australian... Um, this guy is a savant. He's a JFK historian from Australia. And he just adds about the security in Duluth was very tight. National Guard were deployed along the motorcade route. And this is when uh, Kennedy went to Aliquippa. Police were on rooftops. Again, I cannot stress this enough. I, have, I know this is like the third time I'm saying it, but it really needs to be you know, sent home. But it's only because of little old me paying fees, looking through newspaper archives, dredging microfish, et cetera, that these things are come out. You won't read them in books. You won't read them in assassination articles and whatnot. So there you go. And this is amazing. This came out only in 2013. This is an image from a police helicopter. This is from a police helicopter. This is San Antonio, the day before the assassination. There's JFK's limousine, Sears Air Fall Park. So a police helicopter was filming the motorcade as it went along. Imagine if that would have happened the next day in Dallas. Again, um, Australian um, JFK expert Mark Henderson has been studying this case since day one. Visits the rooftops in Fort Worth regarded. This comes from Mike Howard, a Secret Service agent. I've also heard Mike Howard say that as well. The rooftops were guarded in Fort Worth. Ironically, they had a police officer stationed on the roof of the trademark in a market hall. It's a shame, officially speaking, there were no uh, police officers guarding the buildings in Dallas, specifically Dealey Plaza, and history would have been changed. This is when he went to Seattle, building rooftops. And this more in the interest of time, I'm going to go through these a little more. Um, same thing, Seattle, just talking about how this, this guy was saying how security was so tight that he was sent to the roof and talk about the same thing, that they watched all the windows and whatnot. Security rehearsal for JFK's uh, trip to Vienna. Helicopter will hover over the locomotive and talking about the security for both men. This is amazing. This came from um, George McNally, White House Signal Corps, former Secret Service agent. This is an excerpt from my book, quoting his book. But saying that March 23rd, 1963, there was a threat of Puerto Rican snipers and helicopters searched the roofs along the way 
And Don Lawton will become infamous in a moment. So you can Don Lawton rode on the rear of the limousine on that trip. So pretty amazing. Um, just talking about more about the rooftops, another trip to New York, Kennedy. Uh, when Kennedy was going to um, Tennessee, talking about how some buildings will be guarded. And again, South was a dangerous place. And uh, this came from Deb Galantine. Her father was a police officer, tripped to Billings, Montana, and confirmed the building rooftops were guarded. This is amazing. It's from my own hometown. Uh, when Kennedy came to Pittsburgh in October of 62, we had men, police officers, on every bridge in Culver, on every high spot in ground overlooking the president's ride. They were, these men were expert marks, were armed with rifles on the roofs of buildings, and they were ordered to watch the building the windows of buildings and not the parade. If someone had appeared at a window of a gun, they would have been shot. Just talking about it again, and it was a secondary car in, in addition to the Secret Service fob car. And they had uh, their rifles and submachine guns aimed as well. That's why Kennedy survived Pittsburgh. But you won't see agents on the back of the car in Pittsburgh. That's not the point. He didn't always have agents on the back of the car, but he did have this kind of what I call covert security. Here he is. Hey, is this part of Pittsburgh? There's a, there's a police officer on the rooftop. There's another one. There's another one. There's someone's on the ground here. There's another one on the rooftop way back there. There's a woman police officer. And there's a stream blow up, the one you just saw. There's a police officer right there. Mm -hmm. There he is. Soldiers line, JFK rot in Venezuela. That's why Kennedy survived. This is amazing. This is the trip before the Texas trip in Florida. The sheriff's office secured the roofs of major buildings in the downtown and suburban areas. Incredible. And this is how they guard, guarded areas where there was not multi-story building rooftops. So these ranch styles, they were guarded by military police and just regular police. See, there's the military police and there's a regular police officer. That's how they did for roof, you know, the ranch style buildings. And this is Russell Groover, who was the lead. Uh, Tampa motorcycle officer, and he confirms, oh, yeah, Vince, on every building along the route was manned on every floor and roof of either law enforcement or military, all armed. So that's how they protected him when he went to Florida. Here's two agents in the back of the car on that trip to Florida. Don Lott, we just spoke about, and Chuck Zaboral. Hang on the back car, 28 miles long, yet Dallas is only 11 miles. 28 miles, they were able to protect Kennedy tr tremendously. He gets to Dallas, a city he's warned about. And the security's wide open, no matter on the roofs, no matter by the car, and other security measures were taken away, you'll see in a moment. I'm just talking about more about how in Florida they got buildings on the right that they guarded. Here, the JFK's trip to Miami. Vince, can you repeat that, please? Can you repeat that, please? About his trip to Miami? Yes. Okay. Yeah, when um, Kennedy went to Miami, this came from an article. Hey, it was a little fast and people missed that. So reinforce that point, please. Oh, no problem. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, yes. is NBC News article for um, the 50th anniversary. Bob, Bob Helsher. This comes from my book. But the actual article is sourced there. And he's talking about he was a counter sniper on the terrace deck of a hotel when Kennedy arrived in Miami. So, again, I can't stress this enough. This didn't just happen after the fact. These measures were in place since FDR, Truman, Eisenhower, and throughout the Kennedy administration. But he gets to Dallas and rooftops were guarded. There were no counter snipers. People have a tendency to think, oh, but that only happened after the assassination. No, 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 no. And again, it was little old me out of wilderness, amateur me who was digging this stuff up. And that's how this came to be. This is the Florida trip again. We see Lawton and Zaboro in the back of the car. Sometimes they stood, sometimes they crouched a little bit. Sometimes they crouched to get a better view of the uh, people on street level. And they also crouched because 28 miles long, if you're standing, that's, you're going to get sore after a while. You got to crouch a little bit out of necessity. And this agent, by the way, here on the back of this is the Secret Star Fall car is Glenn Bennett, who was making his first official trips as a Secret Service agent on the Florida trip and Texas trip. He was normally a protective research agent. Those agents monitored threats to the president. And all of a sudden, he's putting motorcades on the Florida and Texas trips. Very suspicious, to put him mildly. This is a great color photo. This came across last year. This is the Tampa trip. They were flying. You can see all the motorcycle officers surrounding the limousine. You can see um, it's blurry. <laughs> There's an agent hanging on the back car. That's Chuck Saboral. So that's another reason why Kennedy lived nice speed. The car was surrounded by motorcycles, armed men, you know, obviously trained, eye near witnesses, and men being on the back of the car in that case. 
Again, more from Tampa, Florida. Outstanding motorcycle coverage. Agents on the back of the car crouching. There's Chuck Zaboral's head. There's the aforementioned Glenn Bennett. A couple of men that were on the uh, Texas trip, George Hickey and Tim McIntyre. And this is Vince, good. Yes. Judith, Judith was wondering if you could move to what exactly happened in Dallas and how he was not protected. Okay, well, I'm going to do that. I'll what, get in yeah, a second. What really to... happened in Dallas? Okay, well, I'm going to get to that in a second. I just wanted to show some of these real quick. This is Pueblo. I'll, I'll go through this real quick. This is Pueblo, Colorado. There's um, National Guardsmen on the rooftop, and then all the arrows point to the, you know, the men guarding the route. There's a blow up of the National Guardsmen on the rooftop. This is Kennedy using Eisenhower's uh, vehicle, and there's a police officer on the rooftop. Okay. And you can see more police officers. And less obvious will be the thousands of plain clothesmen and West German police in their light green uniforms. That's how they did it. Thousands of police officers. And there's Kennedy in Germany. <laughs> agents on the back of the car. There's agents on the back of the car in Germany. There's the outstanding motorcycle coverage in England. Prior threats were well known to the Secret Service. And this is before 1963, before the assassination. JFK threat brings alert. Threat to JFK. Again, look, Tampa, the, they had threats on Kennedy in Tampa, the trip before, you know, the Texas trip. Okay, in the interest of time, then I will. I'll go through that right now. Okay, well, the, the big thing is the Secret Service is the boss of the president, not the other way around. Okay, in fact, we'll minimize this real quick here. Just gonna minimize this. Can you see me? Yes. Yes, and a moon. No. Stop share. There you go. You got it. Okay, got it. Okay. All right. Well, the Secret Service is the boss of the president, and not the other way around. Most people have a tendency to think, well, Vince, these Secret Service agents were like butlers and errand boys, right? It, it, no, when it comes to his security, the Secret Service was the boss. That come from Truman, uh, Lyndon Johnson, President Clinton, other people, other presidents have said it matter of factly. So they were the ones calling, pardon the pun, calling the shots here when it came to security. Even if, like Clint Hill said, even if you know Kennedy might have told you what to do, whatnot, and we listened to the president and do what we felt was best anyway. And again, agents on or near the limousine, if they would have been uh, near the limousine in Dallas, I think things would have been a lot different. Instead, they had to run the limousine when it's all over. Clint Hill only gets to the back of the car when the shooting's all over and done with. He's staring at Kennedy in Alkins' film when Kennedy has his head blown off. Only then does he leap onto the back of the car. He's supposed to be his big hero, but he's late because he was one of the agents drinking the night before. Normally, three to six motorcycles were on each side of the limousine in a bracketing formation. But supposedly the night before, when loss of Secret Service, the planning meeting with police officers says, oh, you know, Kennedy doesn't want that. Uh, motorcycles beside the car. We can make this four and they're going to be behind the rear wheels, which makes them totally useless. They can't do anything. They're not going to be able to cover or anything in a small number and behind the rear wheels. When Wynn Lawson testified to the Warren Commission, he admitted under oath, ironically, Alan Dulles, that, well, not in this instance did Kennedy really say anything, but it was my understanding that Kennedy didn't allow, like a lot of motorcycles around the car. And on the prior Texas trip, San Antonio, Houston, Fort Worth, his limousine is surrounded by motorcycles and countless of the trips before Dallas. And again, as I said, you know, I showed in very tremendous detail about the multi-story building rooftops were guarded since the FDR was not done in Dallas. Um, on one third of JFK's motorcade, one third is through photo discoveries and whatnot, the bubble top was used either in partial form or the full bubble top. When I say partial, some of the front and back pieces were on and just yeah, this, the, you know, so the middle part was able to be, you know, so JFK gets a mayor when not intermittently stand. And that was an option not explored. Sam Kinney, the driver of the fog car, Secret Service agent, told me that he, Sam, was solely responsible for the bubble tops removal. And Kennedy had nothing to do with it. Kenny O'Donnell had nothing to do with it. Sam Kinney told me this is one of the things he lived with with regret for years. He told me it's in the early 1990s. But again, Sam said he was solely responsible for the bubble tops removal. It might not be sinister per se. But when you realize a third of his motorcades had a bubble top, often in very nice, beautiful weather, you know, no rain and whatnot, it makes you think, wow, too bad they didn't explore that option. Uh, press photographer's flatbed truck, an interesting time, I was going to show you a video, but I guess I won't have time to get to it. Uh, this is basically um, 
normally flatbed uh, truck was in front of the limousine filming the motorcade. In fact, you have time to show the video. Oh, I do have time to show the video. Okay. I'll show you that real quick. Okay. All right. I'm going to shoot shoot through it real quick. This is uh, various to the bubble topic I'm just saying. I'll show you the video coming up. See, let me look at all the photos of the bubble top on various trips. Beautiful weather, no rain. It was common for him to use the bubble top. A third of his motorcades is quite a bit. I do share and share audio. We can share. Okay. Can you hear that? No. Can you hear no. me? Yeah, I can, can you hear, hear you, me? but do not see That's the, right, video. the video. I haven't got to the video yet. You're fine. You're fine. Okay. Okay, I'm getting to it in a second. Okay. Okay. Can you hear that? Did you hear that little bit? This text no. the audio? No. How about now? No. <sighs> you need to share a screen with computer sound. Okay, there we go. Okay, you hear it? Okay, good. How about now? At Lowe, yes. everything went fine up to the point that the whole day became great frustration for a photographic person. First thing, uh, parades were usually out with a, a flatbed truck for pool and certain selected photographic personnel to ride in front of the presidential car on presidential parades. That was canceled at the last minute. We were put in Chevrolet convertibles to ride several cars back. I think we were about six cars, Bob Jackson and I, and a couple of other boys were in this parade. And, and that, that put us totally out of the picture. Okay. And I'm going to shoot to one more video. Well, he can tell you what he wants done, and he can tell you certain things, but that doesn't mean you have to do it. And what we used to do is always agree with the president, then we do what we thought was best anyway. Well, he can tell you what he wants done, and he can tell you certain things, but that doesn't mean you have to do it. And what we used to do is... Always agree with the president, then we do what we call the best anyway. Okay, you hear me now? What did he say? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. But um, what did what he say in that recording just then? Just now, that's why we had the transcript on top and I repeat it twice. What Clint Hill was saying, and this is only in 2010, that goes against everything he said in his books, him and Gerald Blaine. He's saying that the president could tell you certain things. He could tell you what to do, but that doesn't mean you have to do it. And what we always used to do is agree with the president. Then we did what we felt was best anyway, which goes to my research that the Secret Service was the boss of the president, which is what President Truman, President Johnson, and President Clinton have said on record through the years when they're talking about the Secret Service. When it came to Secret Service security, didn't matter what, if the president said, hey, I don't want those agents in the back of the car they would just blow him off and do what they felt was best anyway. And that's what Clint Hill was admitting. I guess it's for posterity. But yet, if you read his book, you come across with, wow, it sounds like Kennedy was a real taskmaster. He didn't want ages the bag of car. He didn't want the bubble top. He didn't want motorcycles inside the car. How convenient the man's dead, and yet they blame him. And yeah, I don't know if that was for posterity. It blew my mind when I saw it. I could not believe that Clint Hill said that. And I, I just kept on repeating. I'll never forget when I discovered that. I repeated it over and over again. I'll send me a little snip of it fair use uh, snippet of it because I just could not believe it. it no, nowhere else has he said that, which is amazing to me that he actually was on record. So now, to be fair now, Clint Hill was very much corroborated by the agents I spoke to, especially in charge Gerald Bain, who was the special in charge of the White House detail, told me, I don't remember Kennedy ever saying anything about not having agents on the back of the car. If you look at the newsreels, you'll see agents on there. 
And many of his colleagues said the same thing. It was almost like they were reading a cue card. This was the early 1990s. This is before the internet really kicked in. This is before I was, I was a nobody. I didn't have a book yet. No one knew who I was. And I'm calling these guys all over the country, cold calling them. And they're talking to some guy, you know, and the stranger. And they could have just lied and said, oh, yeah, yeah, President Kennedy didn't want us on the back of the car, blah, blah, blah. And so they're all telling me the same thing over and over again. It's just, it was unbelievable to me because it's like, wow. If you read the Warren Report, Death of a President, and other books, you'll think, wow, it's just the exact opposite. I thought Kennedy didn't want that security, that he was supposedly reckless of his personal life and reckless of his security. It turns out not to be the case. So like Judith was asking, the $64 million question, wow, Vince, why wasn't this done in Dallas? Kennedy would have lived. Why indeed? And the Secret Service is responsible. I don't mean as an organization. Many of these men were honorable men. But when it comes down to it, the reason things were done and not done is because of the Secret Service. They pulled the security away, and they oftentimes they blame Kennedy for it. We would have had agents on near a limousine. We would have had the motorcycles bracketing the limo. We would have had building rooftops guarded. We would have had more overt um, agents and police officers in Dealey Plaza and other places. In fact, in the interest of time, I didn't show you, but there was a uh, film and photo earlier in the motorcade, oh, I'm sorry, earlier in 1963, of Kennedy made a trip to California and agents are on the back of the car, yet there's hardly anybody on the street. And it's a beautiful, no rain day. And there's two agents hanging on the back of the car in California. So that debunks the whole notion about, oh, Vince, it's only when there's large tribes would they do these things wrong. And again, like Clint Hill also says in some new uh, some uh, documentaries lately, he says, well, we wouldn't have had men on the back of the car because we were going too fast. Yet Bob Lilly, an agent, um, said, that, oh, he rode on the back of the car. And they were going 50 miles an hour in Puerto Rico. And there's other clips that are going quite quite a bit faster in Dallas and they're hanging on the back of the car point being in Tampa there, there was times that they were really going very fast is with uh, Tampa motorcycle officer Russell Gruber told me so just basically to sum it all up that's where we're at I mean you know yeah, my focus in, in a general way has been on a conspiracy and whatnot but as far as the secret service I've always been I've been mad since day one whenever I've seen the Bruder film as a 12 year old kid in the 70s up to now because, you know, it's not Monday morning quarterbacking. The Secret Service would have done their normal protective functions. Kennedy lives. So, yeah, that's it. Thanks a lot. Hey, do you have time for questions? Yeah, sure. Yes, please. Yes, can you stop share screen, please? Yes. I don't know if you can hear me, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Vince I can hear you good. I we did have a now. question from Gordon Ferry. Gordon? Yeah, right here. Right here. Uh, you know. you may remember me. You got to get close to the mic. He wants to make a bridge with you and start talking about what we know. He's ready to start revealing Secret Service names and wants to get with you uh, on some of the procedures for that. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. He wants to get it right. Gordon Ferry. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. Uh, now, now uh, Judith has a question. He said he'd do it. We get you two gentlemen connected offline. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, right here. Mm 
Did you catch that, Vince? No, I didn't. I can hear you just fine, but everyone else is real murky. You might want to just translate it for me. <laughs> okay. Judith Baker would like you to do a summary, one, two, and three, what the Secret Service exactly did not do in Dallas. Okay, I'll make it real brief. Okay, a summary. What they, summary. What, I, what they didn't do was they didn't allow the motorcycle officers to bracket the limousine in good numbers. Normally, they would have done that, but supposedly Kennedy didn't want that done, which is a lie. So the motorcycles weren't surrounding the car. You would have seen many more motorcycles in good numbers surrounding the car, professional iron air witnesses who were armed. So you had that out of the way. Uh, normally, the option of the bubble top, either partial or full, would have been on the car. Secret Service decision not to be there. Normally, agents would have been on the back of the car or near the, the rear of the car. And supposedly Kennedy didn't want that, which is a lie. That's why they weren't there. Normally, building rooftops would have been guarded. And this has happened since the FDR days. And for some bizarre reason, building rooftops were not guarded. Uh, Gerald Blaine of the Kennedy detail claims that we didn't have the manpower. Yeah, they had the manpower in Tampa four days before when it was a 28-mile motorcade. When it's an 11-mile motorcade in Dallas, they don't have the resources. Normally, it's a flatbed truck in front of the limousine. And it was canceled last minute. Um, Tom Dillard has said in other uh, interviews, and other people said the Secret Service is responsible for that. Um, Ted McHugh, um, Gordon, yeah, the uh, military aide, um, not Ted McHugh, Ted Clinton, uh, McHugh, I forget his name right now, the interest of his first name, but he uh, was the military aide. He normally sat between the driver and the special agent in charge. He was told for the first time not to ride in the limousine. He was there in Tampa. He was there in Germany. He was there in countless other trips. Normally, there's a military man between the driver and the special agent in charge. He was told by the Secret Service to act, accentuate full exposure. Military and or police were not lying in the street facing the crowd. The few officers were there were just facing the limousine. They were useless. You're supposed to face the crowd. There was nobody intermingled in the crowds. The Secret Service was responsible for all this happening and, and not happening. Underpasses should have been guarded, and the underpass was wide open in Dealey Plaza. As Wynn Lawson said to his consternation when they get to Dealey Plaza, he looked over and he saw railroad workers were on top of the underpass. Um, Secret Service agents of mysterious repute were behind the knoll, and yet officially there were no Secret Service agents there. Some people say, well, maybe there were CIA spooks, Vince. My thing is maybe they were real agents, and they covered it up after the fact. They didn't want to people to know there was professional eye ear witnesses back there or maybe there's something nefarious with them being there so it's not always you know cia men and so forth so there you go it's cover and evacuate and also you have the driver of the limousine thomas shipman one of his regular drivers dies the month before in camp david okay and yet bill greer drives from very ineptly in dallas looks back twice the Kennedy doesn't hit the gas disobeys a direct order to get out of line we've been hit as well as common sense of training if bill greer hits the gas everything else is a moot point kennedy lives he's either not shot or at least the fatal shot doesn't come in many uh, doctors said he would have lived for the shot that went through his neck or what well, i believe it was a front shot but either way he would have lived see so you have all that protective intelligence was horrible dallas was a town that was Many people warned Kennedy, J. William Fulbright, Pierre Salinger, the list goes on. Adley Stevenson, don't go to Dallas, Mr. President. And yet the Secret Service supposedly find no threats to the president in Dallas. That would be like former President Obama going to Mississippi and there's no threats to him. Come on, give me a break. And yet they find no threats in Dallas, Texas. So it was that's how he did, security stripping. It's not a matter of pulling the triggers. It's allowing the triggers to be pulled. It's action through inaction. Thank you, Vince, very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Vince Palomero. Thanks a lot. Turn it up. He's gone. He's gone. Tell you what I was going to tell him because it's you I wanted to know. In 2019, we gave Vince Palomero the Justice for JFK Award for all of his body of work. And I asked him how he got started in, a, in his assassination research. And he said he met with Penn Jones Jr. And Penn said, pick a subject, study the hell out of it. I think you can agree, Vince Palomar did just that. He's the expert now on the Secret Service. 
And I'm grateful that he's here. I'm grateful he's contributing to our body of knowledge of what did and did not happen in 1963. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and take a 10-minute break, then we're going to come back and hear Robert Groden. <laughs> 